out there, everybody. It's time for a new Let's Talk About Butt Stuff video, but before we get into the topic of the day, we're gonna take care of that channel maintenance. If you are new here, consider clicking that subscribe button and dinging the bell. The bell gives you notifications every time I upload new content to the channel, which is about two times per week. Also, I am a man of many talents, but one of them is not mind reading. So if you enjoy the content, you're gonna to need to click that like button and leave me a comment below. I get back to anyone and everyone, except you nasty porn scammers, or you marketing spammers. Everyone else, I look forward to engaging with you in the comments below. If that's not enough for you though, head over to the socials. You'll find me at Barrett underscore Laurie at Twitter and Instagram. Give me a follow and engage with me there. I look forward to seeing you on the social medias. So. Let's get into our first of our three-part series on Ayurveda. Let's talk about butt stuff. I asked my dear friend, Caitlin Reese, to come and do a little video with me on Ayurveda. Ar I just said, Ayurveda. I just said yeah. it wrong. Ar okay, Ayurveda. Because you have a lot of experience here and you're getting ready to start school, to start study deeply into it. So real quick, give a quick overview of how you got into not only Ayurveda, but also yoga. I'm Caitlin Reese. I am a yoga teacher in St. Charles and throughout St. Louis, I guess. Yeah. I will put a link below to Jane's house, which yes. is where you do classes. Yes. And anywhere else that you can find her professionally, I will link below. And we also have a lot of stuff for COVID. So, it's yes. so at the studio, you can do online. So yes. We have some passes and everything. So. Cool. And there's many great teachers there. Well, I've been teaching now since 2015. I went into the yoga teacher training program. I moved here in 2010 and I went into the yoga teacher training program um, 2014. So that was the 200 hour. I was a teacher for a few years and became full time in uh, 2016 after uh, working in the construction world for many years, lots of stress. I just decided that I, that's not the way I wanted my life to be. So um, yoga really kind of called me and you've been there through this whole thing. Yeah. So. Um, I, yeah, I watched you change. Mm -hmm. You really, you you know, not that, because I really think you, you liked what you, aspects of what you did. Aspects, yeah. Um, but I think that it just wasn't you. Mm -hmm. And I've told you a million times, you became yourself or the yeah. you you were meant to be through yeah. yoga, really. In yoga and being at the studio for so long, naturally, Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga. Mm. There was a practitioner, or I'm not sure if she's an actual practitioner, I think she is, but she came to Jane's house years ago and she led a workshop. And it was just kind of like an introduction to Ayurveda and I never heard that word before. I took her workshop and I only signed up for the beginning, the intro to Ayurveda and ended up staying the entire weekend. Everything just kind of made sense. It's very simple. Um, it's been practiced for years and years and years. And then um, even in the midst of my stressful job, I started adding in things, aspects of Ayurveda to kind of bring some semblance of balance to my crazy life. Because when you work like 80 hours a week, it's yep. really difficult to stay balanced. Yep. And then I went to the 500 hour training after I become a full-time teacher. I just felt like I needed a little bit more knowledge on how to teach privates and stuff like that. And I ended up working at the Siteman Cancer Center for a while. Yeah. So I'm at least going to become an Ayurvedic health counselor. Yeah. The ultimate goal is to become the practitioner doctor status of Ayurveda. Yeah. I'm giving myself till 40 to get there. Okay. Um, how long does that take? Like if you were, if one were to do that, is that like, what's that I look like in time? So the program that I'm going into is um, 600 hours worth of study. So everything in this realm is like hours of study. Yeah, it's like not college. Like, yeah. Okay, I yeah. don't know that. Yeah. I don't know yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't so. even want to tell you the number of hours to get those master's degrees, <laughs> okay. but it's not 600. So, so you win. <laughs> so it's 600 hours and then you have an externship. I, I think it's like six years, I yeah. think, because yeah. you have to have space in between a little bit so that you can apply what you sure. know Intern. and truly understand yeah. interns, lots of internships. So, so anyway, that is the plan for my life. And wow. so I start in February. That's first year. incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm very excited. Before we get into the Ayurveda, the meat and potatoes, tell us a little bit about the India experience because I was so excited for you when you did yeah, that. Yeah. And so I want to so, hear a little um, bit about that. So I, uh, through my studio, there was a group that went to India through this um, Hindu monk named Dandapani. And he led these trips for years. And I know that my teacher, Robin, had gone on a couple of them. And she just, she came back just like not a new person, but just kind of different. And um, we got to see her pictures and just hear about her experience in India. And, um, and I just really wanted to go. And I 
India was very overwhelming to consider going by myself. I could do it now, I feel, um, but I also really wanted to like go do a yoga meditation retreat. Like how cool. The main focus was actually on meditation. There was yoga practice every day, but the main focus was meditation um, because Dandapani is a big component about talking about how we are not taught how to concentrate. Yeah. And they don't teach it in schools, yeah. they don't, but we're expected to just like, when you start your journey, your spiritual journey, whatever you want to call it, your journey to health, one of the things that you'll see time and time again is you need to meditate. Yeah. And um, people sit down thinking that they're going to sit for 20 minutes the first time they sit down and meditate. And that's just like unrealistic. A lot. Because try sitting still for one minute yeah. without any noise, without anything, and just breathing. It's difficult. So one of the things that he said is whenever he's trying to teach concentration, he talks about doing like set a timer and sit still for one minute. And once that becomes really easy, then move on. Like go to 20 minutes. Yeah. I mean, not, don't go one minute to yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah. Go one minute, four three minutes, minutes yeah, four whatever. minutes, yeah, five yeah. minutes. Yeah. And you could do it very gradually. You could do it one minute, two minute, three minute. Um, so, um, so yeah, it was just this really awesome um, experience. We were in Kerala, which is in South India, which is the birthplace of Ayurveda. Interesting. That was also another main reason that I wanted to go. So the retreat actually worked out. We were in part of it at the Kumarakam Lake Resort in South India, in Kerala. And then we had an option to like break off and go other places. And I went to the one that said Ayurveda. I don't remember exactly what it was, but um, we got to um, go through the spice gardens and everything like that. And but you um, said a stat earlier. Yeah, I think it's I think it's like seventy five percent of the spices. It could be higher. Um, are actually produced in India. Wow. So I got to see like how pepper, uh, like everything was. It was just wow. really cool. So um, yeah, and then um, from there it was just kind of like I wanted to um, continue my journey through Ayurveda and yoga, and so now. Here you are. Okay, so if I were walking into Jane's house, it's Jane's house, right? Yes, yes. If I'm walking into Jane's house and I ask you, what is Ayurveda? My husband's acting as nanny for yeah. Caitlin's baby. Yeah. So he's going to keep me. I know. Well, Ricky, he has a good baby energy. Yeah, very well. um, I'm sorry if he's so heavy. Oh, no. Okay. Good for him. Isn't his <laughs> muscles on Danny? Um, <laughs> so, uh, okay, so I'm walking in off the street. What is Ayurveda? Okay. Um, Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga, okay. and it is an ancient Sanskrit word that means the knowledge of life or life science. It is believed that by using the concepts of Ayurveda, you can achieve optimum health. And I'll share a little bit about my experience with just doing please, little please. things like that and with my husband as well. Yeah. The Ayurvedic way of life means that we um, embrace listening to our bodies, and um, in Ayurveda, every body is unique. So when you are going through your journey of figuring out you know your personality everything like that your body type everybody is viewed as unique and one other thing that I do want to say is the answers in Ayurveda I have found are never yes no it is it depends and yes but yes but exactly or no but yeah yeah so it's yeah. all it's basically always it depends and I mean, it really, it truly depends on season, time of day, etc. So, um, in Ayurveda, there are three main energies, and, and that uh, three main energies, and in Ayurveda, they call them doshas, um, that combine to form all things in the universe. So, seasons, bodies, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, everything has a dosha. Certain animals have doshas. Plants, not certain. All animals have doshas. Plants, etc. The doshas are combined of all five elements: um, fire, space air, earth, and water. And then there are three pillars to Ayurveda, which is yoga, meditation, and nutrition. We are all a unique combination of the doshas, and we are born into, cons into existence as a combination that will not change. And that is known as our original constitution, which is the, known as prakriti. So prakriti in Sanskrit is nature. And this does not change. So how you came into the world is what you will always know how to balance what you need to balance back to or near and how you will leave it, yeah. So, um, and then with that said, dosha is very easily thrown out of balance, out of whack. So in every single day, you can have many different combinations of doshas in your body. Um, and so that's known as your vikriti. So the three doshas are pitta, kapha, and vata, and they're all a different combination of the five elements. Um, so pitta is the container that holds fire and water. Okay. 
kapha is the container that holds um, earth and water, and vada is the container that holds space and air. So the vada characteristics and qualities, we're going to go over that a little bit. So vada is the queen dosha. She is the one that can move herself. If you think about it, she's space and air. Okay. So without a container to hold her, she yeah. is everywhere. Untamed. Yeah. Vada characters are, um, so first, the qualities of Vada are cold, rough, dry, fast. So you can basically take that um, as a Vada type who is always cold, always rough, dry. You need to make sure that they're warm and lightly contained and things so like weighted blankets Makes for Vada is really yeah. great. You we know? have them. Yeah. yeah. And so anyway, Vada types tend to be creative, they're, communi they're, they're great communicators, and they're brimming with ideas. They are easily enthused, but they also can quickly run out of energy. So like they are like bursts of energy, and then like they will just all of a sudden fall over. They are also quick. They can very easily get something, but they very easily forget it too. So <laughs> and like their willpower is a little less developed. Right. So, also uh, <laughs> but I'm not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to tell someone else, right? Or judge someone else's. I mean, like, you shouldn't like, do it in a judge way. Like, you, it's like playful and cute and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I do it with my husband, too. Like, yeah. sometimes I'll, my husband is a kapha. We'll talk about kapha, and I'll just be like, kapha, don't like, And so, like, we, we play, <laughs> okay. like, yeah, so it's fun. Some things about people with Vada, um, they have a delicate bone structure. They tend to be smaller. Um, it's difficult for them to put on weight, or they're low weight. And they are basically always active unless they are sleeping. Like they're always going. Like it's kind of like someone who's just like jazzed on coffee or something like that. Or Coca Colas. I was gonna say speed. We yeah. buy we buy <laughs> cases of it at okay, Costco, yeah. so it's the one um, bad thing we need to get rid of. And so the appetite and digestion are changeable. It's just not very regular for a lot of people, and that is something that you can like. A lot of people tend toward constipation if they are out of balance. Interesting. And you said um, something about the homes. Yes, yes. Okay. Each in your in your body, each of these doshas, Pitta Kapha Bada, have a home. And so Vada's home is the colon. And so everything that moves is considered Vada. So like blinking, your elimination, swallowing, yeah. everything like that is Vada. Basically anything that's moving. When Vada is in balance, they are um, they like just embrace this vitality and they're very creative. When they're out of balance, Vada produces a lot of fear and anxiety. Like Vadas, if you think about it, like when they walk into a room, they'll be like the very, they'll be in the room very quick, set their stuff down, and they'll be like one of the first people up. Just like, they just like disappear. Birds are Vadas. They're just like, you know, mm -hmm. very spacey. I love them so much. Yeah, I have a lot same. of friends who are Vadas. Very good one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so then we're gonna talk about Pitta. Pitta's qualities are hot, wet, sharp, light, and clear. Pitta's known as the stinky dosha. That's, so that's my dosha then. So yes, but also kapha. Okay. Yeah. So um, so wet. Think about it. Sweat. Yeah. Pitta is fire and water. So Pitta people are generally very fiery. Okay. Basically, anybody who has red hair has a lot of Pitta in them. Okay. They have high intelligence and ambition. They have insane willpower. So, like, when I was super paleo and all those things yeah. for years, yeah. it was, like, pit up willpower. Yeah. I wouldn't break it. Um, That's true, you were. <laughs> they even got special ciders. Uh -huh. of, like, I have, did, yeah. yeah. Um, don't drink anymore, but yeah. um, they are born leaders. They have lots of energy and strength and have perfectionist tendencies. Mm -hmm. Their drive is called passion, and generally speaking, their objective is to win. They're pretty competitive as okay. well. Pitta dominated characters love a challenge. They make great athletes. A lot of athletes are. Pitta types love sweet things. So if you have a Pitta person in your life and you just like are super fiery and a little out of balance and really angry, when they're out of balance, they tend to go toward anger, jealousy, oh. and kind of hate. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's a personal. unique it's a unique combination. Me and Pitta Pitta Kappa. So I wonder if my sweaty hands and feet, if that's part of that. I've yeah, had that my entire life. They never get cold. Is. I never wear mittens or gloves. Definitely. Or... So that's okay. Pitta, yeah. Okay. Um, and your beautiful skin from complexion, that is the Kappa. And your beautiful eyes, that's all Kappa. Interesting. The people who are like really fiery and everything. Um, I used to just, my uncle that I worked for when he was um, mad, yelling at the people that work for him. Yes. Um, I would give him something sweet and it immediately pacified. Same. <laughs> Same. Right? Same. 
Halloween candy does it every <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah, so like immediately pacify the situation. Is that true? What? Does candy make me happy no matter what? Yeah. <laughs> or cupcakes. Um, so, and they love cold drinks as well. Uh, so, Pitta governs digestion, and the home of Pitta is the small intestine. So if you think about it, like that's where all the nutrients mm -hmm. are taken in and everything like that. Pitta governs digestion, absorption, body temperature, the skin is Pitta, um, eye colors Pitta, and its home is the small intestines. Interesting. Um, balance Pitta um, tends to be very content, intelligent, and lots of courage. And then out of balance, like I said, anger, hate, jealousy. <laughs> and then we've got Kapha. So Kapha is considered the love dosha. Mm -hmm. So you just want to give Kaphas a big old hug. Like mm. really, you do just mm. just yeah. like big teddy bears, which my husband, your husband, teddy bear. okay. The qualities of kapha are the qualities are very important, and that'll make sense in a little bit. Um, so the qualities of kapha are cold, wet, heavy, dense, and smooth. Dense, like big, yeah. not like, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, not, so, not, yeah, <laughs> yeah, very smart, yeah. actually. People who are characterized by the kapha energy operate in a careful. They're careful, they're considerate, they're thorough. Kapha can sometimes come off as slow because they're so methodical and steady. Like if you think of an elephant, that's totally a Kapha animal. And it, I mean, it's earth, so mm -hmm. Kapha structure. Yeah. Kapha people, they tend to um, have a little bit more difficulty getting rid of the weight, the excess weight and everything. And they tend to be, they're not necessarily large. I know many Kapha people who are just like, you know, curvy and beautiful and not large, but um, Kapha people can tend to like hold on to extra weight. Kapha personalities value inner tranquil to tranquility, peace, and harmony above all else. Mm. Again, like just think of love. Yeah. Um, they also appreciate- So not probably confrontational. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh -uh. But like maybe passive aggressive and a little greedy and be sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, they really do like the um, simpler things in life and they're really easily pleased. Kapha is uh, the lubrication in the body, mucus. They also give biological strength and stability. Think earth, like your body. Yeah, sure. And when they're in balance, they're expressed as love and forgiving. And in the, so if you think about it in the East, this is the prize dosha. The it's what content, you work for. Or... The, the, like the Kapha people are just like the prize people, whereas okay. here, and I'm sure the fire go kill people, yes, slay the dragon. Yes, we're very, yeah. we're very fiery, yeah. and then everybody desires to be that model right. vada, that like tiny little vada, yeah. male, female, whatever, Hungry. Like, perfect little body, <laughs> basically looks starved, yeah, <laughs> gaunt in the face. Um, oh no, I might need to take a break and have some water. Is that possible? Oh please, no, oh, yeah. Um, Do you want to break yeah. and see? Let me just finish yeah. with one thing, oh, yeah. and then okay, so kapha is the lubrication in the body, the mucus, everything. Um, and it, the kapha's home is the chest. Some people say the stomach. So in balance. And you know, kapha was the love, right? Yeah. So that makes sense because mm -hmm. the heart, yeah, right? right? Okay. And then so in balance, it's expressed as love and forgiving and out of balance. Kapha tends to lead toward attachment, greed, and envy. 